Now let's animate the rig to create a walk cycle. So to begin, let's go back to the object level. So we'll hide the fur dude rig, we'll hide the test rig, and we're going to put a new geometry object down, which is empty, and we'll call this the walk cycle. We're also going to hide that and then go in and put a fur dude animation rig down. So this will allow us to work with this uh, independently of the other ones. And it's got all the controls that we need. Everything's up there in the parameter pane. And so we're going to change to an animation desktop. And we're going to open up the walk cycle. Click on the rig in there. And this will allow us to work from the side, work from the front. This, uh, Hide the texture map option. It's down here. The UV textures, we don't need to see that. So now we can sort of make decisions in these the side view, the right view, and the perspective view um, as we go to work. Now, to get the animation rig, we need the handle tool to be active. So uh, otherwise, we're not going to see the controls. So we're going to make the that active. Now we see the things that we want to work with. Now the other thing we want to do is block out the motion. Um, so you have scope channels. So because we have this selected, we have the scope channels there. And as we select on individual elements, you'll see it's it scopes that particular element. So if we were to press K or K keyframe at this point, we'd only be keyframing that one thing um, instead of blocking out everything. So, you know, there's different ways that you want to do it, but we're going to use a block out thing right now. So in order to do that, uh, we're going to right click here, or we're going to left click here, you know, parameters and channels, create nested channel groups, and just, just say close, because we have a channel group over on the side. So what this does is that takes the channels, everything that we built up into our sort of parameter pane here, and turns them into these groups. And every time we select them, we scope the channels. Um, or the animation uh, channels associated with that. So if we want to, we can pin that. So if we pin the legs, no matter what we do, when we press keyframe, we're going to be keyframing the legs. Or we can pin the whole character, and now no matter what happens, when we press K, we're going to keyframe, uh, keyframe all of that. So there we go. And... Um, so let's get started. What we want to do is just, there we go. Deselect, select, there we go. Everything's ready, ready to go. We're going to press K. That'll keyframe everything in frame one. And what we're going to do is we're going to go from frame to frame 10. Now this is going to be later for the fur. When we go to simulate the fur, it'll give a chance for the fur to settle a little bit before the character kicks in. Um, and so we're going to set up the initial pose. Now what happens is because we've set a keyframe here, um, uh, anything we do uh, will be update will be recorded in those keyframes. So we're going to move the front foot forward. We're going to put the COG forward and down a little bit. Uh, we're going to take that uh, back heel and we're going to bend that forward. And we're going to actually grab this heel and we're going to bend that up. So this will be where we are in the walk. You know, it's just the beginning steps of the walk. Now we actually haven't set a keyframe here yet. So what we'll want to do is, well, maybe we have, yes. Oh, no, now we're going to set that keyframe at frame 10. So we had one at frame 1. Now we have one at frame 10. So that will do that. Now, once you've set a keyframe, you can actually make changes. Um, so that's sort of cool. So we're going to go to frame 15, for instance, and press K. Now we can change all the parameters on everything. Um, and it will update the keyframes at that point. So if you're on a keyframe and you update the, the value, um, then you're all set. So in this case here, we're moving the, the other foot forward. Oh, we grabbed the, the main there. What we wanted was the 
the left heel and we're going to move that so it's lifted up pull the heel back to straighten that and what we can do as well is if we want to probably so it doesn't feel so tight get the COG and we can rotate that a little bit uh, so that it reacts to that lifted foot uh, we can also pull that up a little bit uh, to give it more space so there'll be a little bit of a bounce to the step as he goes up and down and up and down so there we go and we've got good motion between those two frames so now we can move forward to frame 20 and just press K again to keyframe that and once we have a keyframe here uh, we can, there we go, uh, we can begin moving that for, foot forward and continue in the cycle. So let's start with the COG. We're going to bring that forward, bring that down, and rotate it back to the center. We're going to move this foot forward, and just like we did before, we're going to rotate it to be pulling into the step. And then we're going to take the, the ball and rotate up the ankle. And that creates sort of the, the next part of our walk cycle. So we're getting a fair bit of nice little motion, right, just from keyframing these few elements. Now we'll go to frame 25. Press K and we can move that forward and continue to do this and work this forward. Now since we're mostly move, move, working with a COJ in the legs, we could have just pinned the legs and said, okay, other parts of the body will we'll deal with those separately. Uh, but just we're blocking out motion. We can always delete keyframes later if we need to, uh, but this will get us where we need to go. So, you know, now we're moving into a position where this other foot comes forward. And the heel. Uh, we're going to get the ball there and pull that heel back. And every time one foot lifts, the body is going to tilt um, to sort of match that in that direction. Let's move the COG, COG forward a little bit uh, in this so it's more balanced over the foot, the planted foot. Okay. So you see we've got a little bit of rocking back and forth, as well as um, you know the feet are sort of doing their thing. Now once we have that, uh, we're just going to keep continuing uh, to keyframe this, this motion, stepping forward every five frames. And, you know, obviously a more seasoned animator may do a lot more tweaking or, or refinement uh, in this, although the advantage of this is we're blocking it out. We can always go back and add some of those refinements later, and we'll talk, we'll talk about a little bit of that later. In the meantime, we're going to sort of straighten that because now we're going to move that forward, down, and we're going to move that one foot that was lifted. Uh, we're going to move that over back to ground and rotate it so that it's sitting on the ground. And if we pull this down and it sort of stretches a little too much, you know, then maybe we might want to lower the COG or whatever with that. But we're going to bend that last, that, the ball of the other foot forward to get sort of what we want there. So we're getting a nice little walk cycle being built here. Let's go in and get another frame. Let's go in the timeline. Now, one of the things we can do if we want to is we can add some other, you know, other kinds of details into this. And we're going to go to the front view and really just explore. So that we've got one complete cycle at this point. So let's just make sure that it's sort of doing what we want. So it's going up, 
going down, it's going up, and in both cases it sort of bobs back and forth between the two sides, and that's looking pretty good. And we'll go back to a perspective view here, that helps it, it makes it easier for us to tumble around and make decisions. And we're going to keep doing this, we're going to keep uh, animating using this pretty much the same technique of moving things forward and and pressing K and then just moving forward, lifting the feet, rotating the feet, and getting this uh, to do what we need it to do. Put that foot down. Rotate that foot down. Can't really see that right now, but if we grab the bottom of the foot, we lift that up. You see now it's flattened. The COG is not quite centered where we need it. So let's move that forward to always get that sort of balance there. And in this case, the rotation will go sort of the other way. Press K at the next position. There are some tools for copying and pasting keyframes which we could be using, uh, but since this is just, we're going two cycles in this, uh, we might as well just do it by hand. Come to here, rotate that up. Okay, so we're going through, and as we do it, we can test it, make sure we're getting what we want, and press K at 45. Move the COG like we did before. Oh wait, now we're going to rotate that foot. Oh, we got the wrong thing there. There we go, we get the heel. Rotate that down. Move the body forward. Rotate it back the opposite way. Uh, we can bring this foot forward, lift it up, and then again pull the heel, animate back the heel. Um, as the foot's being lifted, that would create the most realistic sort of result there. And lift that up a little bit. There we go. And the last keyframe, press K. Uh, we'll just continue that to get the result that we want. And you can sort of see a pattern. One of the advantages of doing it like this is if you copy and paste keyframes, you get a sort of repetitiveness. Um, this way you're sort of getting a little bit of, you know, each one is a little unique, each stride is a little unique, a little give a slightly more organic look to it, so that's nice. And rotate that back. So, you know, the trickiest part here is just making sure you're moving the right foot at the right time and then quickly always test it, scrub through to test it to make sure that everything's moving the way you want. And if, you know, you can always delete some keyframes, go back, do it again if you need to. And the other thing we can do with these things, you know, is maybe play with some of the other uh, controls. I mean, we have all of these things keyframed. So it's not impossible to come in and grab one of these things and, you know, maybe, for instance, take the spine and say, oh, let's bend it a little more that way. So there's a little more emphasis on that. And then when we're over here, uh, take those same spine pieces and bend them the other way. Go back here. Same spine elements. Go the other way. Okay, that's good. 
And so we can, there we go, we got some really nice bobbing back and forth uh, while we're going through and walk through the simple walk cycle. And this is the kind of thing that you, you know, can continue to do. We can also do things like drop the jaw a little bit. Maybe every time it goes down, he opens his mouth and then he tightens it up again. So there's a little bit of a bounce to his mouth. We can have that sort of, you know, just as a secondary element that goes uh, with everything else that we're doing. And so you've got control over all the different parameters that we made available. You as an animator can control anything that the TD made available to you and then animate those pieces. Also use the eye target. So, you know, maybe it, it doesn't stay in the same place the whole time. Maybe it goes up a little bit. Um, maybe when you get over to here, it's down. Maybe when you get over to here, it's a little bit to one side. And maybe when you get to the other key, say over here, you know, you're going to go look even further that way. So we can see now because we always went to a, a, a frame that had keys on it. Everything in the character has been keyed, so we could just tweak and move these things, uh, and they'll update. If we went to a different frame that didn't have keyframes already, we would need to re-keyframe. So there we go. So that gives us the character. Uh, we can see the motion. What we can do now is we can do a ROP geometry output. And we want to do a frame range, delete channel. So we're going to do from 1 to 50. And we'll just um, animate that out or, or, or cache that out. So when you've got all of this, uh, you just cache the geometry out uh, for use in other areas like rendering and so on. Now we're caching this out uh, as geometry because we're going to want to do some stuff with the fur. So we're going to save to disk and this will become a cache that we're going to use to add fur to the character. We also want to render this so we're going to at the same time um, do set it up for rendering. So the first thing we're going to do is put an attribute delete and uh, we're just some primitive output attributes we don't really want so uh, they have CD was okay we don't mind that. Um, the attribute we want to get rid of is well let's do usd export actually cd is fine we can get rid of the cd on this because what we're going to do is we're going to replace all that with texture maps so we don't really need color so we're going to export that and we're going to do the frame range and we're going to go 1 to 50 and we're going to call this usd slash fur dude underscore walk cycle or underscore walk USD and we can save that to disk for rendering later.